study. Senia, welcome back. Thank you. I missed you in the last three <laughs> classes. Um, we've already finished now with uh, Matthew chapter 5, yes. which is just part of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we are yet to complete the remaining part of the Sermon on the Mount. But we need to uh, do a, a quick recap and uh, remind ourselves in the context in which we are uh, and, and as we begin to do Matthew chapter 6. So in the beginning, um, what we spoke, uh, what I had mentioned that the, the whole Matthew chapter 5 is divided into five parts. The first part was the introduction or what we call the, the Beatitudes blessings followed by the metaphors of light and salt Sorry, yeah. we completed that and the second part of the matthew or the sermon on the mount from matthew 5 verses 17 to 48 were the six antitheses yes. uh, or the or examples of christian conduct where we spoke about anger adultery divorce oaths retaliation and love of enemies and we've completed that, that second part and now we move on to the third part which is the the practice of righteousness or the practice of piety and that, that's, that would be Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 18. Okay, uh, so now what we saw in, in our last classes, in our last few classes with regards to the six examples of Christian conduct or the moral law which Jesus spoke about is where he's the king. Uh, see, Jesus as a king himself goes into the desert. He's tempted. He, he overcomes the enemy. He comes now and as a king, he's, he, he receives his uh, baptism and he's ready for uh, to ministry, yeah. begin his ministry. Uh, he stands on the mountain and now he begins to speak about the kingdom, beginning to establish the kingdom. And we saw this narrative discourse uh, pattern that is there in Matthew. He gave a narration about what the kingdom is and then he, now he's speaking about how you enter into the kingdom. And here he has raised up the bar. The king is now raising up the bar of, of what the kingdom uh, rules are, or principle is. And we see, and by, by, by the last class we saw how difficult it is. And it is, is come, is raised the standard to such a place that it is so difficult that uh, what he's expecting from us to, is going, asking us to do go beyond what we think uh, a Christian living is about loving our enemies, about swearing oaths, about uh, how it's all about the interior conversion. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he doesn't leave us to our own devices. He gives us the Holy Spirit. Now, after he has raised up the bar to where it was, and he's and now the fire is heated up so much, you know, and he, he goes on to tell us now, what is necessary to grow uh, in the virtue in which he spoke of? How do you practice it? How do you do go about accomplishing it? You know, and he gives us practical examples. He gives us way, and that is what we're going to look at. And uh, mm -hmm. speak, we're, going, we're going to speak about this so-called practice of piety or righteousness. So let's read Matthew chapter six, verses one to four. Concerning alms giving, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms. Do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. All right, so let's let's take verse by verse, and we'll we'll look at Matthew chapter six verses one today. It says that take care or beware. Some Bible says, or in some Bible, another version will say, take heed that you do not perform your righteous deeds or your piety in in uh, in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you have no reward or recompense from your heavenly Father. Now this word. Piety, um, what do you understand by piety, uh, Zinia? Well, for me, it is a, a kind of a holiness. Okay. You know, where you are trying to prove that you are doing things mm. which are pleasing to God and to gain favor with God. Right. So, yeah. So in or to grow in your reverence, so to say, also. Correct. Yeah, more or less, you're, what you're saying is right. So, piety uh, for a normal uh, lay person mm. may sound like something that is very over religious, you know, mm. a pious person, mm. is somebody who's very religious. And we think that of uh, um, if you are called to follow Jesus, that means you're called to be a very pious and religious person. <laughs> but it's not. It's uh, more than that. It's it it's it it it, has, it simply means 
to have a, a deep devotion towards to God or a deep relationship with to it's more about a relationship than about an external uh, mm. put you know uh, uh, how you put on externally and uh, for the jews the three major forms of piety was were these that is alms giving which we're going to see yes. now prayer, prayer and, fasting. and fasting so these are the three forms major forms of piety which was practiced by the jews in the first century and uh, it is very interesting to note that even in islam of uh, they have the five pillars of islam yes. and of the five pillars the three pillars are th- one is prayer yes. thanksgiving uh, sorry alms giving, giving and fasting. Uh, fasting so you see uh, judaism christianity and uh, islam. Uh, islam which are the three monotheistic religions have these three forms of piety or three forms of uh, uh, you know of uh, good deeds performing good deeds and another in another class uh, in our previous classes we spoke about we always spoke about the, in the jesus in the de- desert faced this three kinds of temptation which adam and eve faced which uh, jesus faced and which john speaks in 1 john chapter 1 verses 15 to 17 that the lust of the flesh <coughs> the mm. lust of the eyes and the pride of life oh. this is the three kind of temptation which every human being goes through and we see adam and eve faced these three temptations and they failed jesus faced these three temptations and he overcame them overcame yes john in his letters is when john is writing his letters john who wrote the gospel he's he's almost at the age of 90 or 100 you know in his very old age and he's and all the apostles have already passed away and here even john is writing his letters he speaks uh, he doesn't feel the need to speak about uh, disciplines in the church like saint paul writes in his letters mm. you know giving instruction but he 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 the two things the one thing that he focuses on is his love his letters are more about love, love. you know True. if you if you cannot love your neighbor whom you See. can see how can you love god whom you cannot see and then john will also make this very important point 1 john chapter 1 verses 15 to 17 that what is in the world is the lust of the flesh or uh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life or some bibles will say the disordered desires of the flesh mm. the disordered desires of the uh, of the eyes and the pride of life or even the good news bible a very paraphrased version will say what people see and what people want what okay. you know and <laughs> what people possess yeah. and pride in things you know so these are the three kind of temptations we all face in our life and i we spoke about this in in the previous class if you remember when we were speaking of the temptation of jesus and to combat these three kinds of temptations is what jesus gives us prayer alms giving and fasting and, fasting. and uh, now this pi- the word over here piety over here is also the other word for righteousness, righteousness. used over here in the greek and or it also means a covenant behavior where even in jesus uses the same greek word in uh, 5 verses 20 where he says unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of scribes and pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven there is the same greek word is also used in 3 verses 15 which we saw earlier 5 verses 6 and also it will we will see later on in 6 verses 33 mm. so um when i spoke about piety being a relationship with god a deep devotion to god and that everything that jesus is now teaching us on the sermon mount is all about our relationship with our father even you need to see jesus when he was tempted in the wilderness the catechism of the catholic church 538 if you receive for your reference 538 will say that the purpose of jesus uh, the devil tempting jesus in the wilderness was to diminish jesus filial relationship with his father Wow. So that was one of the one of the reasons, and uh, the point of attack was to break the relationship, the father son relationship, and that is so that Jesus will not trust in his father, and th- that is what personal piety is more about. Is about our relationship with our father, and this is what the the devil will try to do in our life. Try to break our relationship with our father so that we stop trusting in him, you know, and try learn to trust in our own selves. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. lack of piety and spirit lack of trust in yes, the father lack of trust in the father's goodness you know yes. and therefore when we see this he will therefore when he speaks about his three acts of piety he will also say that the reward that comes also will come from the father itself that means my acts of piety if it is done in the open i will lose my reward from my father but my acts of piety when it is done in secret i will re- receive my reward from my father that's why he will use the reward three times he will use a mm-hmm. uh, promise to reward three times in verses 4 in verses 6 and verses 18 he will speak about the three kinds of reward so mm-hmm. 
it's a good thing to look for a reward from the Lord after all, <laughs> because there is a reward attached to all these three acts of piety. So, but the thing is that we should we should be doing it only for His eyes and not for public recognition, which is very difficult today in the culture in which we live, because we all want recognition today. And this is something that we need to battle out. And when we, I'll, I'll be quoting, giving a lot of quotes from the early church on how they saw this this so-called battle of vain glory. You know, mm. how did they uh, face it? You know, did so they see how they overcame it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what they read. Let's see what they see. What they see. So, l like you know, in like a marriage. There is intimacy in marriage. What we do in our intimacy is all in the confines in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what we do, it is only for ourselves and not for the world to see. We don't do it in the open or on the host, mm -hmm. rooftops or anywhere, but we do it in the confines of the room. And neither after that, after we have done it, we neither in the next day we go and tell the people in work, see, this is what we did in our room. No. That is only for us. In the same way, we like uh, the Jesus is our br uh, our br bride bridegroom. and bridegroom, and we are the bride. What we do is only for the eyes of the Father between our, us and the spouse, and we go and don't tell it anybody else. And therefore, our reward also will come from Him at one day, if not here, but in heaven for sure. Mm -hmm. So you see that alms giving is also a form of piety, which we'll see now the first one, but it's also a form of penance and uh, which helps us to combat the first temptation which is the lust of the eyes what people see and what people want you know so because sometimes in our life there are so many things that we that we want but it's not something that you really need so if you for example a pair of shoes or for example that that four wheel drive you that we want <laughs> and it completely drives us our life you know our minds are so uh, driven by the things that we want that we forget about anything else forget about everything else we are so ob obsessed with that and to come and and we need to combat this not just you know sometimes we say lord take away this desire take away this desire from me and the lord will not take away desire but lord will give us a, a method or a way to combat this vice by a virtue the opposite True. of vice is a virtue, virtue and which is a habitual thing which you need to practice which is learning to give alms giving to the people more, it, rather than receiving, we begin to give. And this is how you combat the first temptation in our life, that is the lust of the okay. eyes. So the okay, uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, chapter 1, 4, uh, paragraph 1, 4, 3, 4 will say, The interior penance of the Christian can be expressed in many and various ways. Scripture and the fathers, the church fathers, insist above all three forms, which is fasting, prayer and almsgiving which expresses conversion in relation to oneself, to God and to, to others. others. Alongside the radical purification brought about by baptism or martyrdom, they cite as means of obtaining forgiveness of sins. So there's also a way of forg obtaining forgiveness okay. of sins. Effort at reconciliation with one's neighbor, tears of repentance, concern for the salvation of one's neighbor, the intercession of the saints and the practice of charity, which all covers a multitude of sins. So all of this, remember the scripture, charity covers a multitude of sins. sins. So these three acts of uh, these three acts continue to be the the hallmark of Christian penance, and the Catholic Church today also encourages us to practice these acts of holiness. And that's why uh, every year annually, once and during the season of Lent, these things are spoken about: yes. about prayer, uh, fasting, and almsgiving. And when we begin to practice this for the forty days of Lent, what happens? It becomes a habit. habit yeah. It's something that should flow the rest of. That means it, you after penance, you don't stop doing it. It becomes a part of your life, and then when we uh, when we fall when we uh, we should not forget it, and that's why every year annually the church reminds us that we should practice practice this. It's not something that will be done during Lent, but it's something to be done for the rest of your life. Why why forty days so that it becomes a part of your life, and the church understands that when it, when the when Christians practice this in this season of Lent, automatically it goes on to their into all the seasons of liturgical seasons of the year. Yeah. Catechism of the Catholic Church, pa paragraph 2043, will say that the f uh, when speaking about these three acts of piety, the fourth precept, you shall observe the days of fasting and abstinence is established by the church, ensures the time of uh, penance, which prepare us for the liturgical feast, and help us to acquire mastery over our instincts and freedom of our heart. The faithful also have the duty for providing for the material needs of the church. So our almsgiving can be anything. It can be our tithes. It can be giving for the poor or it can be giving for the needs of the church. So we have to learn to develop this habit. Mm -hmm. The best way is to learn to keep aside 10%, you know, keep aside 10% of your of your income for the work of the Lord. In that way, you will learn to give, you know, uh, when, when the Lord blesses you with more, you can also increase your 10% to 5 to 15 to 20 
how the lord places it upon your heart but the church doesn't give any minimum 10% or anything but it's a, it's a good practice to keep ten, it's a practice that i have de- developed over over years and is something that i have seen teaches me not to th- uh, hold on to things but it teaches me to learn to let go of the mm. uh, the things that because after all what we have is god yes, and the 10% yes. we give also is god's <laughs> and that 90% that is with us also belongs to god so all that we have we have to give an account of that to god eventually you know paragraph the two uh, paragraph 2447 of the catechism says the works of mercy are charitable actions by which we come to the aid of our neighbor in his spiritual and bodily necessities instructing advising consoling comforting are the spiritual works of mercy as as are forgiving and bearing wrongs patiently the corporal works of mercy consist of feeding the hungry sheltering the homeless clothing the naked visiting the sick and imprisoned and burying the dead so these are the uh, corporal works of mercy among all these giving alms to the poor is one of the chief witnesses to the fraternal charity it is also a work of justice pleasing to god so again the church has uh, is uh, has uh, made it made it more clear over here reinforcing what the lord has spoken and it's also uh, in 2462 it speaks in paragraph says giving alms to the poor is a witness to fraternal charity it's also a work of justice pleasing to god which i have already uh, spoke about then 2744 says prayer now speaking about prayer prayer is a vital necessity proof from the contrary is no less convincing if we do not allow the spirit to lead us we fall back into a slavery of sin how can the holy spirit be our life if our heart is far from him so how what prayer does prayer helps us combat the spirit of pride the mm. the pride of life that is the, the temptation which we all overcome and not and uh, catechism continues to say nothing is equal to prayer what is impossible it makes possible what is difficult easy for it is impossible utterly impossible for the man who prays eagerly and invokes god ceaselessly ever to sin so when we learn to pray daily we seldom fall into sin so those who pray are certainly saved but those who do not pray are certainly damned here yeah, this is what the church teaches <laughs> us okay uh, it's not to be taken literally but there is a meaning to it yes. okay that <laughs> when prayer becomes a part of a life we are more inclined to do god's will okay. when prayer when there is lack of prayer we are just doing what we want and learning to trust in our and yeah. we lose focus of it again one i want to quote from another paragraph 2745 prayer and christian life are inseparable for they concern the same love and the same renunciation proceeding from love it is the same filial and loving conformity with the father's plan of love the same transforming union in the holy spirit who conforms us more and more to christ jesus the same love for all men the love with which jesus has loved us whatever you ask the father in my name he will give it to you this is the command to love one another he who prays ceas- without ceasing who unites prayers to works and good works to prayer only in this way we can consider as re- realizable the principle of prayer without ceasing so that is something that we're going to speak about later so these three acts of piety is something that we have to practice daily it's it's an habit it's a when it becomes a part of your habit it's a it becomes a virtue it becomes a part of your life so it says take care not to perform your righteous deeds or your piety in order that people may see them otherwise you will have no reward from your heavenly father so now the uh, um the early uh, church fathers they speak that that Christ now having fulfilled the law in respect to commandments now begins to fulfill in respect of promises so that we may do God's commandments for heavenly wages and not for the earthly which the law held it out now let's see what i mean earthly now all the earthly things are reduced to two main heads this is what the early church father says to there is human glory and abundance of earthly goods hmm. and it was promised in the law in the old covenant so it's uh, quoting from Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 the lord shall make thee higher than all the nations who dwell on the face of the earth so that's the human glory, glory. and and in uh, in another scripture verses he says the law in same scripture as he continues to say the lord shall make thee abound in all good things that is speaking about earthly wealth so these two things were promised in the old covenant but now the lord is saying to be uh, beware keep a check watch pay attention that these two things are something that you have to be careful of glory and wealth and this is something that we need to be careful of so uh, saint chrysostom says when anything truly glorious is done there is there is ostentation you know or display of wealth yes. has its readiest occasion so the lord first shuts out all the intention of seeking glory as he knows that this is of fleshly vices the most dangerous to man 
the so 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 this is what uh, king chrysostom says augustine will say that how great the strength of love of human glory has he speaking about the the strength in the power of human glory but he who has proclaimed war against it you know that it is so strong that you have to proclaim war against it you know because it it, it just you get obsessed with human glory for though it is easy for not anyone to wish for praise when for though it is easy for any not to wish for praise when it is denied him it is difficult not to be pleased when it is offered <laughs> you see so yeah. that is that is the temptation of vain glory you know recognition that we all look for as human beings saint chrysostom again will say observe how he has begun as it were describing some beast hard to be discerned He's speaking about the vain glory as a beast which is very difficult to be discerned yes. you know and ready to steal upon him who is not greatly on his guard against it it enters secretly and carries off insensibly all those things that are within <laughs> so that is the the temptation of vain glory so what is jesus jesus is not questioning uh, the giving of charity over here to the needy because this was an obligation commanded in the law of the sinai covenant if you see in exodus chapter 21 verses 2 exodus 22 verses 20 to 26 and exodus 23 verses 10 and deuteronomy 15 verses 11 but he is in criticizing the intent intention, the intention yeah. behind the giving it you know of uh, the misuse of charity mm-hmm. for self glorification for recognition so and for gaining wealth gaining wealth <laughs> yes oh yes so of gaining wealth and win, uh, and and glory exactly so exactly those things yeah So again I want to quote from uh, uh, the early church father Chrysostom he says therefore he enjoins this to be more carefully in more uh, avoid he says take heed that you do not do your righteousness before men it is a heart that we must watch that is the heart in the inner being look all everything is coming into the the inner the inner conversion inner penance for it is an it is an invisible serpent that we have to guard against <laughs> speaking about this glory you know the recognition which secretly enters in and seduces but if the heart be pure into which the enemy has succeeded in entering in the righteous man soon feels that he is prompted by strange strange spirit yeah, if your heart is pure and when these come you begin to realize there is a strange spirit that is coming into you but if his heart were full of wickedness he does not readily perceive the suggestion of the devil and therefore he must be first taught do not be angry do yeah. not lust <laughs> for he is under the yoke of these evils cannot attend to his own heart correct so you see how uh, it all has to go with what the jesus taught and us earlier and it's so it's so nice it's in sequence he's teaching us step by step step by step know? correct exactly again he chrysostom will continue to say how can it be that we should not do our arms before men okay this is what he's yeah. really questioning correct. okay or if this may be how can it they be so done that we should not know of it for if a poor man comes before us in the presence of others yes. how shall we be able to give him arms in secret so this is his question if we lead him aside it must be seen that we shall give him i observe that he he said not simply do not before men but added to be seen of them he then who does righteousness not from this motive even if he does it before the eyes of men is not to be taught to be here in condemned so some people so he's not condemning doing charity in the open the intention be- behind doing it again it's all the the motive for he who does anything for god's sake sees nothing in his heart but god for whose <coughs> sake he does it as a workman always before his eyes who has entrusted him the work to do so he is doing like a faithful servant before god because only god sees the work that he has been entrusted him to do i think this is something that we all uh, a question that i've had in my mind before you know you don't want to parade your good deeds mm. you don't want to now that we are conscious about it but sometimes the situation is such that you cannot uh, do it in secret mm. you know it just happens on the spur of the moment yeah. and things like that but then i think we don't really need to worry because if our motives are pure then that's what matters with god you know Correct. so let exactly. anybody think whatever they want exactly. as long as you you check and your motive which is the some which is something that we have to practice daily yes. the motives you know yeah. how to escape Change. from it i will i will still continue to quote from the early church fathers church fathers gregory he says if we then seek the fame of giving we make even our public deeds to be hidden in the sight okay for hearing we seek our own glory and then they are already cast out of his sight the lord's sight even though there be many by whom they are yet unknown it belongs only to the thoroughly perfect to suffer that their deeds to be seen and to receive the praise of doing them in such sort that they are lifted up with no secret exaltation whereas the now what he's saying the the those who are thoroughly perfect or cleansed within a holy and doing it for god It, it when they do such thing works be, be, before men 
they know that there is no secret exaltation within them but for the weak now he's saying for the weak whereas those that they are weak they cannot attend to this perfect contempt of their own fame so they must so they must do their goods hidingly hmm. so that they overcome this temptation yeah, of recognition overcome, you know true. so he's giving uh, some i think it's more of yeah. a practical kind yeah, of way of yeah. how do you overcome it now augustine will say that to be seen by men he says uh, he seems to have forbidden that we should make we should make that the end of our actions for the apostle who declared if i please men i should not be a servant of christ this is what saint quoting from saint paul from galatians chapter 1 verses 10 but even saint paul in another place he will say as augustine quotes i please all men in all things 1 corinthians 10 verses 33 so now augustine says he he did not say this so that he might please men actually but god to whom to the love of whom he desires to turn the hearts of men by pleasing them So okay. this is what he he, he uh, Augustine says quoting from <laughs> So much from of Saint, reasoning. So many of so much of reasoning. Again Chrysostom I'm quoting a lot of early <coughs> church father quotations today. What shall you receive from God who have given God nothing? <laughs> what is done for God's sake is given to God and received by him. But what is done because of men is cast to the winds. But that wisdom is it to bestow our goods to reap empty words and to have despised the reward of God. No, you deceive the very man for whose good work good word you look for word that we look for recognition for he thinks you do it for god's sake otherwise he would rather reproach than command you yet now look listen to this chrysostom says yet must we think him only to have done his work because of men did he do his work because of him who does it with his whole will and intention governed by the thought of him but if an idle thought okay seeking to be seen of men mount up in one sort but is resisted by the understanding spirit he is not there upon to be condemned of pleasing man sometimes Fantastic. unknowingly this thought comes in our mind oh i can please men by this suddenly the thought comes as a as not something you intended but it comes so you have to push it away right yeah. so he is resisted he resisted by the understanding of the spirit yes. the holy spirit gives him this understanding that that is something that is not pleasing to god and immediately he pushes resisted, it away yes. and therefore he is not to be condemned of pleasing men but for that the thought came to him was the passion of the flesh what he chose was the judgment of the soul so Fantastic. where you know where he gives a reason so that all these situations we must take into account and not just judge people yes, uh, uh like explicitly you know as if he has done it uh, as a sin we yeah, cannot because we don't know what he is battling exactly. in his own so mind the, so that is why jesus says it, yeah. do not judge in the first place because Fantastic. we do not know what is in yeah, the yeah. heart of the true, person true. so that is why he rather not judge uh that was chrysostom is it that is saint saint chrysostom last but not the least i want to quote from saint basil saint basil calls vain glory the robber of good works okay so he says let us fly or flee from i heard about flee from sexual immorality <laughs> now he's saying flee from vain glory he says <coughs> the insinuating spoiler of good works the pleasant enemy of our souls the moth of virtues the flattering ruin of our good things who colors the poison with the honeyed mixture of her deceit and who holds out to the souls of men her deadly cup and i think it continues to say and i think she does it so that men may more greedily drink her down and never be satiated with this <laughs> with her how sweet a thing is human glory to those who have not yet even experienced of it so this is all about uh seeking vain glory in verse 1 take heed or beware jesus saying beware okay after all the after all that he spoke in the moral commandments in chapter 5 saying now beware you do not do these charitable deeds before men to be seen, seen by them by otherwise them. you have no reward from your, from your father in heaven so the so i think the reward that we get in in in, uh, in getting the accolades from people is our reward <laughs> you know so why do we what what can god give us then so so it's it. it's something that we should think about you know how many of us sometimes when we do good works we expect recognition and how many how many times we we are we are hurt wounded because people don't say thank you or give us recognition how how many of us you know this is something yeah. that we have to overcome this is something that we need to change in our life amend this and it it cannot come overnight it has to come through a practice and practice of a virtue is something that you doesn't come over grow overnight it's a habitual thing right a vice that is a vice, similarly like vice which has grown over time a virtue has to you have to combat it by a virtue and one of the ways we can do it is by learning to give arms give don't seek to receive you know when we want vain glory we should 
let go of the vain glory and learn to give praise give praise to praise other people you know look yes. as saint paul will say in his letters look for the interest of other people yes. you know praise learn to praise others you know give give more importance to others so we, we what what is the lord saying more than the receiving you learn to give yes. this is what we need to learn to uh, do in our daily life in every action everything that happens in your life am i on the receiving end or am i on the giving and this is what you need to check check the box are you on the receiving today today if, if something that has happened what was i on the receiving end or was what was i on the giving end am i a person because there is more joy in giving and all remember there is a reward waiting for us in heaven and there's we just have one shot at the reward one or rather one shot at eternity <laughs> so let's not blow up that reward so the more we do every day the more we are the more rewards we are accumulating in heaven you can imagine and and one day we will get it all with probably with the compound interest and etc we will get it all bonus too <laughs> bonus uh, everything everything is waiting for us our treasure is waiting for us where jesus said no might never now moth rust or even thieves can enter that is the kind of thing that you want to hold to not to vain glory which is temporal because all don't you want which one do you prefer something that you want to uh, that passes away or which one something that is going last to last forever, forever yeah. so you want to hold on to that right so keep this in mind that you want to hold on to something that lasts forever and keep this in mind always when when you live your life here on earth and practice this practice arms giving and learn to combat the lust of the the lust of the what is this uh, the eyes Uh, and you uh, know and and overcome it and this is what we want to do as christians think about what we uh, spoke today and in the next few classes we will be speaking about a little more about the arms arms giving in verses 2 3 and 4 uh, anything else you want to add zenia no thank you very much glen <laughs> something to was really interesting <laughs> yeah so thank you all for joining us uh, god bless you see you next week bye bye